So now we're going to look at isomorphisms that map G to itself. And we're going to give those isomorphisms. So an automorphism is just a type of isomorphism where the domain and codomain are the same. All right, so here's an example. C3, uh, where C3, I guess the elements are going to be 0, 1, and 2. And the, this is the automorphism, minus the input. And then phi of 0 will give you 0, because 3 is equivalent to 1. Great. It's an isomorphism. It's definitely 1 and 1 and not 2, because, because there's only one way to get 0. You have to put in 0. Only one way to get 2, only one way to get 1. And all 0, 1, and 2 are hit. So it's 1 to 1, because there's only one way to get 0, only one way to get 2, only one way to get 1. It's on 2, because all 0, 1, 1, 0, 1 and 2 are hit. And now we can test to see whether it's a homomorphism equals 3 minus that of algebra here. I can add 0 to it. That doesn't change into 3 negatives. But since it maps C3 to itself, not only is it an isomorphism, it's an automorphism. All right, here's a Klein 4 group. Klein 4 group is Z2 cross Z2. And here's, I'm going to map D. I'm going to swirl for, for this. And then this I'm going to send to 1, 1. And it's 1 and 1 and not 2, because for every possible output, there's only one input. It's also on 2, because every possible element of G is hit. And it's operation preserving. You can check this. That's just not. Um, so that's OK. Here's the symmetric group. So the elements of here are E, 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 3, 2. So I'm just going to swap the 1 and the 2 in each cycle. So I'm going to swap those two. That's going to become a 2. That's going to become a 1. Those two are going to switch, and those two are going to switch. Let's see what happens. Um, the identity 1 and 2 are both fixed, so that's a big issue. So if you have 1, 2, I swap the 1 and the 2, and I get the same thing. 1 and 3, I swap the 1 and the 2, and I get 2, 3. I swap. I'm going to go to 1, 3, 2, because I swapped the roll of 1, 2. Lastly, I get 1, 2, 3. It's, uh, it's definitely 1 and 1 and 2. You can tell just because I gave you the entire list. And then uh, you can check to see that's a homomorphism. It is. All right, there are a bunch of isomorphisms that are neomorphisms. So here are a couple. Every example of an isomorphism uh, was not an isomorphism, or was not an automorphism. So basically, if you go to G, if you have an isomorphism from, P, from G to H where G is not equal to H, uh, then then it's an isomorphism, not an automorphism. Okay, so let's look at the example where I just switch 1 and 2. There. Phi of sigma is just equal to multiply by 1, 2 inverse, which happens to be itself, sigma, and then 1, 2. So the identity maps the identity and map to itself. 1, 3 is going to map to 2, 3 if you do this calculation, right? What happens? 1 goes to 2 here, 2 stays put, 2 goes back to 1. So 1 is fixed. What happens to 2? 2 goes to 1, and then 1 goes to 3, and then 3 stays put. So I get 2 goes to 3 there. What happens to 3? 3 stays put, 3 goes to 1, 1 goes to 2. So 3 goes back to 2. So that's how we get that composition from left to right. 2, 3, similar calculation, you get 1, 3. Exactly the the outputs that we get, that we got last time, automorphism. Whenever you have this form, it's called an inner automorphism, and so we give it a special name. So this is called an inner automorphism. Comes up a lot, and here's your first example. That's it. Thanks.